students this is shahid sir today we are going to discuss a new topic of our chapter biotechnology and its application so our new topic is genetically modified crop so for this you should aware of what is the meaning of genetically modified organism so the genetically modified organism are those organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering technique in our previous chapter we have discussed how to alter the genetic material of any organism we can alter we can change the genetic material of any organism with the help of biotechnology so we can alter that gene of interest we can add that gene of interest in that organism so that we can change the characteristic of that organism so some of the characteristics we can modify and in that organism in which we have altered the gene that organism is said to be genetically modified organism whose gene we have changed so in this we will see how we can change some genes in plants to make that plant able to survive in some conditions some adverse conditions so genetically modified crops so we'll discuss here genetically modified crops by taking examples so our first example is bt cotton we all are aware of this we all have listened this bt cotton so first of all what bt stand for so bt stand for the soil bacteria that soil bacteria is bacillus thuringiensis so bt stand for bacillus thuringiensis that is one type of soil bacteria and the characteristic feature or that is the feature of this bt cotton is it produce crystal protein which is also said to be the cry protein so it produce the crystal protein that kills certain insects so one of the good protein is produced by this bacillus thuringiensis which is which can kill some of the insects which can harm the cotton so here the examples are given of some insects which can harm the cotton so if we use this protein if the plant are having this protein they can easily manage this insect so if we are able to insert this protein into plant then plant can easily survive in the presence of this insect so bacterium forms protein crystal during a particular phase of their growth so this bacterium forms protein crystals during a particular phase of their growth and this protein is not toxic for the bacterium whatever the bacterium produce this type of protein this type of protein is not toxic for the bacterium it will not harm the bacterium because it it is there in inactive form that inactive form is pro toxins so this protein when it is form in the bacterium it is in the inactive form which is pro toxin so it will not harm the bacteria so bacteria will easily survive even they are producing this type of protein still they can easily survive because this protein which is produced in the bacterium is in the inactive form which is proto protoxin form so bacteria can easily survive but when any insect digested or when any insect take this protein so when it is ingested by insect it is converted into active form by the alkaline ph of the gut which solubilizes the crystal so when this protein is ingested by any insect when that protein enter into the gut of that insect because of that alkaline ph that inactive form is converted into the active form and it will harm or it will kill the insect now we'll see how it will kill the insect so the activated toxin binds to the surface of the epithelial cell lining of the midgut and create pores through which water enter the cell so when insect ingest this protein what happen the next this protein binds to the epithelial cell the outermost lining the outermost cells of 
the midget of this insect and it form the pores so because of this pores what happen water can easily enter into the cell so here what happen because of water is entering into the cell this cell this causes a swelling because of this water enters into the cell same cell become turgid swelling of the cell occurs and when the water more water enters into the cell the breakdown of cell wall takes place the breakdown of cell membrane takes place that we can say lysis cell lysis so cell will die so this causes swelling and lysis of the cell and leads to the death of the insect this way this protein can kill the insect so specific bt toxin genes were isolated from bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated into the several cross plants such as cotton so we know that this protein can harm the insect if we are able to insert this protein into a plant that is a we can take one plant that is cotton plant if we are able to insert this gene which is responsible to produce this type of protein so it is advantageous for us or for plant that when this protein enters into the plant and any insects came to eat they will kill that insect so for cotton we can use this gene we can, if we are able to add this gene which can produce this type of protein it will kill the insect so this way it can protect the plant the choice of gene depends upon the crop and the target pest as most bt toxins are insects group specific and the toxin is coded by gene name cry so this there are there are many varieties of this toxins and they are coded by name c r y that is cry now there are numbers of them for example the protein encoded by gene cry 1 ac Here you can see cry one A C and cry one A B, and what are the function of this cry one A C and cry two A B? It control the cotton ball worms, and another is cry one A B. It control corn borer. So these are some of the examples of some types of protein which can be produced from Bacillus thuringiensis, which can help plant from pest. so it protect the plant from this type of insects so here you can see it is an example of cotton ball here you can see there is no cotton ball here you can easily see well grown cotton ball now first case this first figure this a diagram it shows this it destroyed by ball worm destroyed by the ball worm and destroyed by this now in this second case here you can see whatever the growth it is a proper grown so why this happen because it is a fully mature cotton ball so here there is no damage so here you can see whatever happen is this happen because of the pest so here this insect this can damage this and this is the real image of this a1 this you can see it is damaged because of the insect but it is not damaged suppose our bt bt cotton this is our bt cotton it is not damaged because insects cannot harm this now the second example is pest resistance plant in this normally we are taking the paste as nematode nematoda so in this we'll discuss about nematode resistance tobacco plant so nematode in this what happen a nematode melio degenerate incognitia in fact the root of tobacco plant and cause a great reduction in the yield one nematode is there which can enter into the roots of bt that enters into the roots of this plant and it can damage it can reduce the yield of the plant this is the condition when nematode enters into the root of the plant and this is the condition where there is no nematode 
so a novel strategy so for this we need to use a new strategy so that is the novel strategy called rna interference it is also said to be the rna i has been used to produce tobacco plant resistant to this nematode so we need to make the tobacco plant resistance to this nematode so that nematode this nematode cannot harm the tobacco plant so here a new word is there rna interference rna it is also said to be the rna i so what do you mean by this rna interference so rna interference is a biological process in which rna molecule inhibit gene expression or translation so rna interference interference means it interfere suppose one process is there transcription and translation from rna protein will be formed if something happen because of some reason from rna protein will not form something interfere in the translation process so it is said to be the interference so this rna interference is a biological process in which rna molecule inhibit gene expression or translation so because of this something happen because of this rna i rna interference which inhibit the translation process which inhibit the process of rna formation of protein from rna so it is said to be the rna interference so we'll discuss about this what is the rna interference actually happen how it actually happens so this is a normal condition what actually happen this is a normal condition from dna to initially pre mrna form from pre mrna to mrna and finally protein is formed so transcription and translation happen suppose here we are having a dna from dna initially what happened rna that is a transcription process from dna double stranded dna rna is formed rna we know this rna is a single stranded molecule so single stranded rna initially that pre mrna is formed then this after splicing from this pre mrna our mature rna mrna is formed from this mrna after this what will happen from mrna from the process of translation protein molecule form so our main aim is to produce the protein molecule but because of this rna interference what happen whatever we want our main protein protein will not form so now we will see why what happen here so that protein will not form now here rna i rna interference takes place in all eukaryotic organism as a method of cellular defense this you need to remember rna i that is rna interference takes place in all eukaryotic organism as a method of cellular defense cellular defense means it can protect it is a protective mechanism it is a protective method in eukaryotic cell it is there in the eukaryotic cell which is said to be the protective method which protect the cell from foreign particles or foreign any foreign particles now this interference is due to the presence of antisense rna which is complementary to the specific cellular rna uh, now how this rna i is formed this we will see here how this forms actually suppose here we are talking about one organism so every organism is having their own mrna so their own rna is already there so cellular mrna this is their own rna if we are able to introduce a new gene a foreign gene by our dna technology we can do this by genetic engineering we can do this so if we are able to introduce a foreign gene so that foreign gene can produce a mrna or they can produce a rna by transcription process they can produce a new rna so here what happen because of foreign gene insertion a new rna strain which is anti sense mrna strain is produced here this is to be the sense and this is the anti sense how why it is said to be the anti sense because it is complementary to our cellular mrna strain cellular mrna strain is run from 5 prime to 3 prime so here <coughs> it is complementary to this and it runs from 3 prime to 5 prime why it is said to be the complementary because suppose here a is there so here suppose u is present so this can bind to this so a complementary strain can form now this complementary strain how we can add this complementary strain and how we can make 
the RNA interference. What are the sources of adding this antisense mRNA strength? So there are mainly two sources. So the sources of this complementary RNA could be from an infection by virus having RNA genome and mobile genetic element also said to be the trans transposons that replicate via an RNA intermediate. So there are mainly two sources. From that two sources, we can add this new strain, that antisense mRNA strain. This is also said to be the complementary strain. So by this, we can add this antisense or complementary mRNA strain. And after this, these both are complementary to each other. So they can easily bind with each other. And the product, whatever we will get, that now it is having double strain. So double stranded RNA can be formed. So what happened here? Initially, gene isolated from nematode introduced into the tobacco plant. This is the first step. What we are doing in the first step, we are isolating the gene from the nematode. Introduce and then introduce that gene into the tobacco plant. Because of this, this gene undergo transcription and translation. Now this gene in the tobacco plant can do translation and transcription. Mostly it is doing the transcription. So because of transcription, what happened? It undergoes transcription and form double stranded RNA. Suppose this is our, we are adding, we have added the gene and it, it is able to do the transcription in the, in our plant. So what happened here? Because of transcription, it can form RNA strain. Now this actually is cellular RNA is there, then a complementary RNA can be formed because we insert a new gene. Because of this, if nematode feed this tobacco plant, now it undergo transcription and form the double stranded mRNA. Suppose here it formed this, actually cellular RNA is there, so they can bind to each other because complementary to each other, so it will form the double stranded RNA. Now double stranded RNA is already there in our tobacco plant. If nematode feed this tobacco plant, then the mRNA of nematode binds with the dsRNA. Why it binds? Now what happened here? Now we have added a new gene in our tobacco plant and because of that new gene, RNA eyes are formed or we can say double stranded RNA is already formed in our Bt cotton, our tobacco plant. So because of this what happened? If nematode feed this tobacco plant, then the mRNA of nematode binds with the dsRNA. Now why it binds with the dsRNA? Because it is complementary to the mRNA. Because already we have initially added a gene from nematode. So it is having the gene of nematode already there. So it will get the complementary to the mRNA. So whenever it will get the complementary strain, so this complementary strain binds with the nematode mRNA. So this dsRNA binds with the mRNA. This dsRNA interfere in the translation of mRNA. And when this dsRNA bind with the mRNA of nematode, what happened here? This will prevent the transcription process or translation process. Now this mRNA of nematode cannot do translation. And this is said to be the silencing. They cannot do the translation. They stop the translation process. If there is no translation, then we can say no protein will form because what happened because of translation, because of translation, protein is formed. So if there is no translation, then we can say there is no protein. So no protein will form. If there is no protein, then nematode dies. Why nematode dies? Because protein is very essential for the growth. For our growth also, protein is very essential. So if protein is not formed, in the nematode, nematode will die because they are not getting the nutrient, they are not getting their food. If they are not getting their food, they cannot survive. So nematode will die. Why it will die? Because mRNA cannot translate. If mRNA cannot translate, it, will, it cannot produce the protein. And because of this, nematode cannot get the nutrition and nematode dies. So here you can see this two images. This first image shows that root of typical control plant and here transgenic plant root five days after deliberate infection of nematode but protected through the novel mechanism. So these are the two images. From these two images you can easily get the idea. One is infected and another is not infected. So through this mechanism we can easily 
increase the yield of our plant thank you